Hey everyone, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home and I've got a big collection update to do for you. I've got almost 10 titles here to show off and the cool thing about this is I bought every single one of these. So there's no review titles. I picked these all up from different sales and different opportunities out there. So I'm really excited that I was able to add a ton of like back catalog stuff to my collection that I had been severely lacking for some time. So you'll see all that in this Blu-ray and 4K collection update video. Before we get started, if you collect Blu-rays, movies, DVDs, 4K movies, whatever you do, home theater, if you just like movies in general, I think you'll really like this channel. So please give this video a like if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button and follow along for more videos like this on my channel. Now, with that being said, let's get right into this update. So the first three I'm gonna show off here, I have grabbed from some recent Amazon sales. Um, what I've been seeing is a lot of Touchstone Pictures titles. So that's actually uh, Disney's kind of like adult arm that they did a lot of their live action movies through in the 90s and 2000s. And I'm seeing a lot of their movies go on sale for about $5.99. And when I see that, what it says to me as a collector, because I've seen this before, is that those prices are dropping, they're probably trying to get rid of stock, and these titles could start to go out of print, especially as Disney makes a push for their more uh, adult side of Disney Plus, where a handful of these movies would probably end up. So I grabbed them because I didn't have a few in my collection. I wanted them, and for six bucks, it's really hard to go wrong. So the first one is The Proposal. This is actually a really funny movie. If you like Ryan Reynolds and you like Sandra Bullock, you'll really, really like this movie. It's a lot of fun. It is one of the better uh, romantic comedies, I think, out there, and I'm not a huge fan of romantic comedies. There's just a handful. Crazy Stupid Love is one. Uh, 500 Days of Summer is another one. I Love You Man. Uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall and like The Proposal are probably top four or five for me. I don't really love that genre, but this one always made me laugh. It was on TV a lot uh, over the last 10 years, so you may have seen it at some point, but I wanted to grab it on Blu-ray. I was shocked I didn't already have it in my collection because it's also a movie that my wife really loves, uh, so easily grab this. Six bucks was a no-brainer from Amazon. Now, this next one is another movie I could have swore that I already had in my collection. It's amazing when you have, I'm looking around the room, 3,000 movies almost in here, and you find these movies and you're like, no, nah, I definitely have that. Uh, no, I don't. And that's why it's important to track your movies with a, a collection app or something because I would have never bought this. But it is uh, Pearl Harbor. So, you know, regardless of what you think of this movie, at least the opening scenes with the like actual battle of Pearl Harbor are really intense. And that's a really like great part of this movie. The rest of it, yeah, give or take, it kind of turns into this kind of romantic love story it's it's not my favorite thing in the world but i literally bought this for that first scene and because i'd like to go back and kind of re-watch this maybe i know it got a really bad rap uh and michael bay catches a lot of crap for it but it might be okay after a few viewings i don't know i've got to revisit this one but couldn't believe i didn't have it in my collection feels like a pretty big movie that at some point i would have picked up uh, but I didn't. So another one that for $5.99 and from that Touchstone Disney um, catalog was important to grab just in case they do start to go out of print. And then the last one that falls under this same category is uh, a movie that a lot of people really like. I think it's just okay. I like it. It's not like I love it over the top. But I remember watching this in school a few times because I had teachers that loved it. For some reason, this always gets shown in schools. And it's Dead Poets Society with Robin Williams. It is definitely one of Robin Williams' like better roles, one of his better movies. And it is certainly a, it's an interesting movie. It's a really nice like coming of age type thing. Um, I feel like they made a lot of movies in this time period, like in the 90s that um, like we're all about like teachers and kids and like these great teachers. And there was a lot of like inner city ones too, but this one's out of prep school. Um, but Dead Poet Society is, it's good. I mean, I like it. It, it. I'm not over the top about it. Some people really, really love this, but it's another one that I was actually shocked I didn't have. I really thought I had this in my collection already. And again, was $5.99, a drop from the previous price of $10. And when I see stuff like that, that consistently stays low priced on Amazon, 
and other retailers don't seem to have many copies. That's why I'm saying I fear these are going out of print. So if you want these, I would suggest picking them up. Worst case, you spend $6 and they don't go out of print, but I don't see many of these as candidates for 4K. So you're probably safe with buying a Blu-ray at this point and getting it in your collection, at least with an HD physical copy. Now the rest of these movies I got actually all happen to be horror slasher cult movies. And that's because I really like that genre. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. And also because there was a big sale on them. Now the first one is one that actually is one of my favorite movies of all time. I would probably put it top five up there. Um, maybe even top three for me. I just love this movie. I don't care that at this point it's probably overhyped and it's been talked about so much i think it is maybe the greatest horror movie ever made and that is hereditary on 4k did not have this on 4k for some reason i only bought the blu-ray when it came out i think maybe um i hadn't fully embraced 4k and i was still buying blu-ray for things here and there um this was you know three or four years ago but at this point obviously i'm deep into 4k and i, I see all the benefits of the format and it's been hard to find for a good price actually i bought this at 18 dollars, which was the cheapest i'd seen it in the last six months it just never dropped in price on 4k the blu-ray is often very cheap but the reason i wanted this on 4k is because there are a few moments that i think you could miss on a blu-ray that you may actually be able to make out on 4k that make the movie just that much scarier so i'm actually going to review this in a future video so we'll talk about all that and whether this one is worth upgrading but i had to grab it it's a it's a top three movie of all time and probably my favorite horror movie because i don't consider um jaws to be traditional horror so this is my number one horror movie and i absolutely love it and had to have it on 4k now the next six movies i bought from the big february they called it love is in the scare sale so like love is in the air and this was from shout factory but specifically their scream factory line of discs which is focused on horror and kind of cult movies i love scream factory horror movies i have I'd say at least a hundred of them. I have an entire shelf that is just dedicated to Scream Factory titles. So whenever I can get them at a decent sale, they have a lot of sales throughout the year, but this is one of their better ones. So you have to kind of watch because sometimes they have sales that just aren't really that great. They're sales in quotes, um, but this one was actually a really good sale. So the first one I grabbed was the only missing link from my Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, series on Blu-ray that I needed. And that's Texas Chainsaw, the next generation on Blu-ray. Came with the collector's edition slipcover, which was nice. Always love to get those where I can. Sometimes they're hard to find. But if you don't know this movie, it is one of the stranger ones in the series. It's definitely very campy, definitely like very B-movie vibes. But Interestingly enough, it has some huge stars because it stars Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. So massive stars now at the time, not so well known. Um, but it's interesting because on the back of this, I talked about it, you know, being a little campy. The, the quote that's given here is this movie is Leatherface crosses Divine, who was the, the drag queen with Hannibal Lecter. So that's kind of the vibe you get. You can see we got a little bit like of a drag version of Leatherface here on the front. Starts going with uh, woman's clothes, woman's hair. It's an interesting, campy, B-movie, lots of fun, but had to have it for my collection. And it's actually like kind of sneaky good. If you've never seen it, I would recommend checking it out. I don't mean good from a critical standpoint. Obviously, it's not going to, uh, shouldn't have won a bunch of Oscars or anything, but it's like really good if you like cheesy horror slasher stuff. It's a lot of fun to watch at least, and it helps complete that collection and that series for me, at least to this point. So I'm happy with being able to grab it at a good price. Now the next couple are also uh, movies that I needed to complete a collection, and that is the Psycho collection. So Psycho, if you don't know, um, obviously was a very famous horror movie, maybe the first slasher movie you know of all time, certainly inspired lots of other movies, Alfred Hitchcock, 1960. And I've reviewed that on 4K, the original is an absolute classic. But what you may not know is that it actually spawned several sequels and a remake. 
And at this point in time, I only had the original Psycho, obviously, and Psycho 2. So Scream Factory actually has the rest. So I grabbed Psycho 3. And Anthony Perkins actually stars in uh, all the sequels, which is really cool. He continued the character of Norman Bates all the way through. So lucky for me, Psycho 3 still came with that collector's edition slipcover, which I was not expecting considering how long it's been out. But you never know. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes, you know, maybe this one didn't get purchased as much for whatever reason. They had some slip covers laying around or printed more, but I love that I got lucky with that. So that completed part three of the Psycho series. And then I got Psycho 4, The Beginning, which is actually an interesting sort of uh, prequel also set in the current day. So you have Anthony Perkins playing Norman Bates, but you also have, uh, forget this kid's name now, Henry Thomas from E.T. He is the younger version in some flashbacks and it kind of explores the origins of Norman Bates and his character well before Bates Motel ever did that. So this completes the, the Psycho series. I've got now Psycho 1 through 4, uh, 3 of the 4, 2, 3, and 4 coming from Scream Factory and Collector's Editions. So that's great. And then to round things out, uh, again, people may not know this, but Psycho was actually uh, remade. And it's actually a pretty faithful like shot for shot remake is what they were going for. It was critically hated at the time, completely critically panned. They did not like this movie, but I think it's kind of interesting if you look at it as sort of an homage to the original and how that may play out in the world of the late 90s in Hollywood and how they would envision that same story. So I actually think it's pretty interesting and it has a big name director, Gus Van Sant, and stars Vince Vaughn as Norman Bates. Um, and that is the Psycho remake, 1998, I believe this came out. I'll double check on that, 1998. Um, but I think it has its merits and I needed it to complete the Psycho collection. So again, another one from Scream Factory that they offered. Um, they always have great transfers. If they don't have new transfers, they add on extras, commentaries, special features, lots of cool stuff like that. So that's why I really love Scream Factor. If you haven't checked them out and you're a horror fan at all, definitely go look at their, uh, their titles. But um, Psycho completes the entire Psycho series at this point. Uh, I guess the only thing I'm missing is technically the Bates Motel TV show. I guess I could add that at some point, but I've at least now got all the movies from the Psycho universe. And then the last couple I picked up from Scream Factory are sort of cheesy cult movies that I know aren't gonna be good, I would consider them to be like midnight movies, um, and I kind of love watching that movie every once in a while. I can definitely see myself watching this with like teenagers at some point, not, that, that sounded really weird. My own teenagers, like kids at some point, um, watching, you know, kind of these crazy B movies. So I love watching cheesy B movies, shut your mind off type stuff, and uh, exploring like the history of horror, slashers, finding some of these, you know, lesser known gems. Uh, but the first one, this is super goofy, and it was done on Mystery Science Theater uh, 3000, so you know it's goofy, um, but it's The Bat People. So this movie is, as it says, it's a movie about bat people. From the director of Airport 77 and Raise the Titanic, Jerry Jameson, it's a goofy movie. The cool thing about this is the special features actually include the Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode because they have a pretty good deal with Shout Factory. Um, and it's called It Lives by Night. So it includes that episode and then has some of the trailers and stuff. But I just, this was like five or six bucks and I said, it makes sense. I love having these B movies. I love having movies in my collection that you've probably never heard of and many people might not have. I consider them to be more rare. If there's only about 500 copies of this out there in people's collections, that's a very rare piece and someday somebody might want it. So I, I, that's part of my like, I'm curating a collection, but I'm also serving as like an archive of media um, is how I kind of view it. And I love those types of movies, so I can't go wrong there. Then the last one here, um, it's a cult classic. It is probably one of the original movies that had inspired many spoofs like this. Um, and it got a new HD transfer from the original negative. Something Scream Factory does and Shell Factory does an excellent job with, even on these really lesser known titles or weird titles. Um, but it's the Slumber Party Massacre. Um, the original driller killer, right? He, th this guy comes into a slumber party. He's killing girls with a power drill. It's ultimate cheese, ultimate gore, ultimate cult B-movie 
greatness and obviously just this idea of you know the slumber party massacre like that has inspired obviously so much over the years whether cheesy or not um this is a, a classic cult movie and it was another one that was like five or six bucks i think during the sale i don't even remember i know that my total for six movies was like sixty dollars with shipping which is really really good from screen factory to average around ten dollars a disc especially with how much effort they put into them and all the work the artwork transfers extras really good prices so had to have this in the collection actually uh, i was shocked i didn't have this one yet i think i was confusing it with another <laughs> very similar movie um, but had to grab it add it to the collection and being from screen factory with the new transfer even better so that's it for the update that's what i've been buying i will leave links to all of these things down in the description so if you are interested in any of them and you buy them through my links that helps support me but also make sure to support your local video stores and other small businesses as well i'm just giving you the option and it's the only option i can give that also helps me support my channel and my content so i appreciate everyone who does use those links now, I don't have anything else for you today, but like I said, I will be doing a hereditary 4K review. I have some more 4K stuff that's in the mail right now. Newer movies, I just got the uh, press release for News of the World, so that's coming on 4K. I've got a couple other ones in the works that um, are, are also on their way from various different studios. So I'm finally starting to see some new releases uh, make their way to 4K. And there's been some exciting stuff from Paramount with uh, My Fair Lady coming to 4K and Super 8 and some other things that'll be coming out. So lots to come. Make sure you're subscribed and definitely like this video, please. That helps us expand our reach, reach more collectors, inspire more people to collect and support physical media. And that's a win-win for all of us. So hit that like button, subscribe, turn your notifications on and let me know in the comments what you guys have grabbed lately. I'd love to hear from you always love interacting and if you want to interact some more find me on social media those links will be down in the description as well tiktok we're almost at 5,000 followers believe it or not there's a physical media community there so find me there and on instagram and check out all the other links for ways you can support but the greatest support right now is honestly you made it this far in the video and you gave me a view so i really appreciate it hope you guys have a great rest of your day stay safe and stay healthy out there and i will talk to you soon